Good morning guys and welcome back to another video here from Romania. We are currently walking on one of the main streets here in Bucharest, Romania and this is a city full of food. We did a previous food video uh, here in Bucharest but today we're going on a full street food tour of Bucharest. I'm very excited. The food here is amazing. It is exceptional and I cannot wait to share it all with you guys in this video. So let's go ahead and get started with our food tour here in Bucharest. Unfortunately, at this point again, my microphone has failed. So we're doing this after this was actually filmed. The first place we've come to is a place known as Canteen 162. It's located right in the old town of Bucharest and it is an amazing place. It's in this beautiful little courtyard and of course the ladies that run this place are some of the friendliest and most helpful staff members that you could ask for. We got a few things here and it looks pretty good. The first thing we got is a soup. So I asked whether they had a chorba. Chorba is a very uh, classic Romanian stoop, soup. And she said that they had one with meatballs. And just look at the quantity of meatballs in here. It is incredible. I mean, just biting in, the meatballs just literally melt in your mouth. A lot of times when you have meatballs, they're really dry or if they've been frozen, they're really dry. But these are freshly made. You can absolutely tell that they're freshly made and they literally just disappear integrate from their ball form once you bite in because they're just homemade freshly made that day the soup itself is a nice sort of like meaty flavor but for me the more impressive part about the soup isn't the actual soup part of the soup but really the meatballs that has got to be one of the best meatball soups you can try in romania now let's get on to the main plate what have we got here we've got some fries so some sort of fried potatoes here on the side and the main star the main thing that she actually recommended to me is this incredibly delicious juicy pork chop i mean look at how seared it is you can see the color of the pork chop you can see that it's been cooked it's got this really really nice color to it just biting in you can tell first off that is some of the juiciest pork you're gonna find i don't know what it is about eastern europe and how they do pork but they know how to do pork and most of the pork in eastern europe has been incredibly juicy from hungary and now to romania that is a delicious delicious piece of pork they're also quite substantial it's a pretty big piece as well it's not like a tiny little like rationed portion it's a pretty big piece so for what you're getting and for what you're paying you're getting quite a bit of that pork the fries are pretty standard. They're just nice crispy potatoes. They are sort of quite flavorful as well. They've got a bit of like a salty taste to them. Mixed in with that pork, the two really complement each other really well. So actually the funny thing is when I just got the potatoes, the next thing the lady asked is, do you want pork with that? Because they do work well together. They work really, really well together. But overall, what an amazing combination that is definitely worth it. And like I said, smack dab in the middle of the old town. You could go to some fancier and more expensive restaurants, but here at Canteen 126, you're getting some really, really authentic, delicious, home-cooked Romanian food that is pretty hard to find in this area of Bucharest. <laughs> Okay, I found a nice little gelato shop. It's called Uau. You can see right behind Uau Il Gelato. I got something which is like vanilla with sustafide. Have you remember sustafide? We had it in the kofrig um, in Romania before, which is the um, raisin thing. But this thing is melting, so let's hurry up and eat it. Let me go and try it out. Oh, that's just rum and raisin. That's literally just rum and raisin. Ah, that makes sense because stafide is the raisin and then there was like vanilla with rum, I think is what it was. So it's just basically rum and raisin, that's all it is. 
You do see a little speck of vanilla, the little black dots within the ice cream. So that's clearly showing that there is a vanilla base to this. But this ice cream is completely melting. So I'm just going to finish this off because the sun is hot and this isn't going to melt unless I start eating it. Uh, so I literally, another drop is about to fall. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll see you guys when we eat again. Look up the cut. One. One. All right, next up we've come to is a place right behind me. It's called Luca. And Luca, it's this sort of fast food pastry thing that's everywhere. That's literally everywhere across the city. Like you will find Luca's on every block and everybody gets it for some random reason. It's very, very popular. Everybody likes to get Luca. And I said, you know what? I've got to try it. And I decided to get one. It's called a Luca Picante. It means it's a spicy Luca. What is a spicy Luca, honestly? I have no clue, but let's go ahead and try out our Luca Picant. It's like a hot dog that's inside this bread roll dough thing. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Mmm, that is so amazing in so many ways. The actual sausage on the inside. It's not a normal sausage. It is a spicy sausage, which is why it's picant. Picant is sausage. No, picant is not sausage. Picant is spicy in Romanian. And you can tell, it's not like your normal sausage. It's very, very snappy. It's very, very snappy. Inside, you've also got some red cabbage, which did not expect there to be red cabbage inside a hot dog. I mean, have you ever seen a hot dog with red cabbage on the inside? And it's filled with mayonnaise. So we've got like a mayonnaise with the spiciness of the snappy hot dog on the inside. The one thing I don't like is that it's really, really dry. The bread, the bread is a really thick layer. It's not crumbly, it's not flaky, it's not really a good sort of dough. I feel like it's too, too heavy, too thick of a bread layer. But the sausage on the inside, that's what you really come for. It's so spicy, it really, really hits you like right on the tip of your tongue. I, I can, oh, I can still feel the spice. It's not the spiciest thing in the world, but it definitely does hit. It definitely hits. The creaminess of the mayonnaise plus the crispy red cabbage on the inside, that is a perfect combination, but wow, that is good. The total price of this, five lay. I mean, five lay is like what, a buck for this. And it's not very small either. Like you can see, it's a pretty long thing. Um, for me, the sausage though, that's the thing that really hits it. The spiciness of the sausage, that's what makes the whole thing with the creaminess of the mayonnaise and the crispiness of the cabbage. The combination together just simply works. All right, we are back in the old town. The sun has set. It is now officially dark here in Bucharest. And uh, we are at a place that is supposed to serve some of the, I mean, it's, an, it's an old, old, old place. So I can't wait to show you guys what this place is about. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a table because I think it's pretty packed. Hopefully they don't need a reservation or else we will not be eating here tonight, but let's see, let's see. Yeah, it's at place. All right, we've come to this place. They do have a table. It's called Karun Suber. It's a place that's been open since 1879. And if you just look at the ceiling, it is like a traditional, very, very old, old place. It gets about as old as it gets. The tables are like wooden, old, medieval. It feels like I'm eating in a medieval castle or something like that. Order some local dishes here. I can't wait to show you guys. Um, so I'll see you guys when the food comes up. Well, our food's finally come. It is a hearty portion without doubt. I mean, literally, look at this. What do I have here? I've got some pork, um, some pork that's been sort of cooked and stewed down with some polenta, some cabbage, and of course, some of those classic Romanian sausages, which are very famous here in Bucharest. Um, like I said, this place, look behind me. I mean, look at the scenery behind me, the arches, everything. It's like I've stepped back in time and I'm eating a medieval feast, but of course, Lemonade, not a very traditional medieval thing, but uh, I gotta start off with some lemonade here. On a hot day like today here in Bucharest, this is the best thing to have. Let's go ahead and try it out. Ooh, wow, oh yeah, that's really, really sour actually. I thought I got it with mango, but I don't taste any mango. Maybe they messed up my order, but that is sour. Definitely very, very sour, but cold and refreshing, which is exactly what I need. Let's go ahead and dig in. I'm gonna first go ahead and try the pork, which, oh my god, just look at that. It is falling apart literally on my fork. Okay, I just gotta go in. I'm just gonna get a little piece here. Oh, this looks really good. It's literally dangling 
by the membrane of the meat. That's how soft and stewed down it is. I mean, it literally is gonna break off any moment. I have to be very gentle with the pork because if I'm too rough, this will literally break. All right, let's go ahead and try it out. That is some of the smokiest pork I've ever had. Imagine the flavor you get from really, really charred bacon. That's what every little strand of meat tastes like in this pork. It's delicate, it's soft. I love how the fatty parts of the meat have just turned into those tender things that are just keeping the meat together. If it wasn't for them, the meat would literally disintegrate. Like, that's how soft it is. All right. Of course, I'm gonna try their famous sausage as well. Um, it looks a little bit dark, almost like a bit red. Maybe it's a blood sausage. I don't know. Go ahead and try this out. Mm. Oh yeah. The flavor of that sausage is deep. I think there is a little bit of blood in there. I think I can taste a little bit of like a bloodier flavor to it. Very, very deep, very rich flavor to the sausage. That is incredible. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find everything. So, I'm gonna get some pork. I'm gonna mix it in. I'm just gonna get a small piece of pork with the polenta, with the actual cabbage. This looks like a hearty bite. This looks like the bite of, you know, Romanians for hundreds and hundreds of years. Let's go ahead and try that. That is perfect, and here's why. The cabbage, you might think that it's just normal cabbage. No, the cabbage is sour in flavor. And the sourness is almost like sauerkraut. It helps to cut down from the fattiness of that pork, which is just dripping with juice and fat that's barely holding it together. The polenta, nice, warm, and fluffy. It's exactly what you want. It is so fluffy, it is so warm, and it just disintegrates once it happens, uh, it enters into your mouth. For me, what I really like is the sourness of the cabbage. That sourness really helps to break down the oiliness and the fattiness of the pork. It's, it's really fatty. The pork is without a doubt really, really fatty. So you need the sourness of the cabbage. But the combination together works. You've got to get it all together. The polenta, the cabbage, the pork, all three of them together, that's what's going to get you the perfect contrast between the different flavors. But wow, definitely a really good thing to try when you're here in Bucharest. And probably one of the best settings ever. Okay, I'm going to finish this up and we've got a traditional Romanian dessert that I've been wanting to try for a long time, but I haven't. So I'll show you guys when dessert comes up in just a bit. All right, finally our dessert has arrived. And we've gotten something that I've actually been thinking about getting for a very long time. This is papanashi. It is a very traditional Romanian dessert. And I saw it in Brasov, I saw it in Sibiu, I saw it in Timisoara, I've seen this, I've seen it in Chisinau, I've seen it everywhere. Just about the chance to try it. If I don't try it today, I'm leaving Romania. I've never, I might never get the chance to try it. So I got to give this a try. Papanashi is basically a fried Romanian donut. But inside the donut, they have jam, they have berries, and they have sweet cheese. So, without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right in. Um, like I said, I've I've seen it everywhere. I've literally seen it all over Moldova. I've seen it in you know in all different cities in Brasov and in, in, in Sibiu. I just never had the chance to try it. So let's go ahead and try out my first. Papanashi. I've just cut it right in and the cheese has just fallen in like a little like river like a waterfall of cheese. Let's go ahead and try it out. Mm. Totally understand why people were talking about this the whole time. This is incredible. The dough itself the donut is so airy, it's deep fried, it's crispy, it's oily, but it's just so, so light and so airy on the inside. You've got cheese, but the cheese doesn't taste like cheese, it almost tastes like a whipped cream. It's so soft, it's so gentle, no no cheese, it's just really sweet and everything. And the berry sauce, it's not sour, it's just really, really sweet and delicate. Of course, the powdered sugar on top adds to that flavor. But it's also not a very thick sauce. It's a very watery, thin sauce, and I like that. Because with the donut, with the donuts that's already deep fried and with all that oil, you don't need a thicker sauce. You don't need to add a thicker sauce on top of that. And of course, the cream, the cheese, is already thick enough that you don't need a thicker sauce to add on to the thickness, or else it's gonna be too, too, too thick. But 
the flavor is incredible. I really have to admit, the flavor here is incredible. And it's quite heavy, it's two big ones. I just took a bite, like, I feel like I'm, I, like it filled half of my belly. So definitely, definitely save some room for dessert if you come here. Uh, but I'm gonna finish this up and then I will talk to you guys in a bit. Oh, I think my stomach is about to explode in the middle of the Bucharest Old Town. That is a meal that will stuff you, the papanashi. I couldn't finish it. I honestly couldn't finish it. I finished one and I still had one more to go. I took a bite of the other one and I was like, I am done. That really is, I mean, it's cheese plus berries plus fried donuts and the dough, even though it's airy and everything, even though it's light, it's a lot. It's really, really a lot, but what an amazing day. What an amazing food day it's been today. Um, from, you know, the incredible, incredible meatball soup that we had for lunch to the delicious sort of cafeteria style, the pork chop. Oh, the pork chop was amazing. And then the ice cream and then obviously the luca, which is a very popular street food here in Bucharest. And then that meal right there, the traditional braised pork. They actually, their house special is actually a pork knuckle, but the problem is that pork knuckle is usually for two. And I'm not sure if I could finish that whole thing, especially if I was gonna get papanashi afterwards. I probably wouldn't be able to touch the papanashi. So that's why I opted for the uh, traditional stew, but still very traditional Bukovina style uh, pork uh, stew here in Bucharest. It's been a great food day. It honestly has been a great food day and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos. Um, that's gonna be our last food video here from Romania, unfortunately, but it's been a great food time here in this country. I hope you guys have enjoyed the Romanian food series. And we've got more food series coming up, so make sure to stay tuned. Um, and I'm excited to show you guys more of food here in Eastern Europe, so stay tuned and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.